go ahead and open this meeting and stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here. Jennifer Weehy. Here. Jennifer Anderson. Here. Mm -hmm. Ann Pillow. Here. Al Glick. Here. Pam Jackson. Here. Okay. Um, first, I'd like to address everyone uh, that's in attendance that would like to address council. Have you all signed in and mark that off? Yeah. All right. So. On Monday of November 20th of 2023, the Village Council met in regular session. During the course of that meeting, it was brought to the Council's attention that Village Patrol officers were wearing out-of-date protective equipment. This was a matter of deep concern for the Mayor and the Council concerning the safety of the Village Police Officers. Village Legal Council advised the Council that the Council should pull all Village Officers off the street until such time as the officers have the proper safety equipment. The village police chief tendered his resignation as chief of police while council met in executive session on November 20th of 2023. The village was left with absolutely no police protection for our citizens. Ohio revised code states that the village must have an active marshal or police chief to have a functioning police department. The council took swift action and appointed officer Jake Tenbrink as our interim chief while we worked through our, this situation. As a result of the above situations, the council took immediate action and reached out to the Hamilton County Sheriff's Office. We met with them in an emergency meeting on November 21st of 2023, and the council reached an agreement with Hamilton County Sheriff's Office to temporarily, temporarily offer us full coverage service for our village 24 hours a day for the next 45 days, commencing on November 22nd, 2023. A member of the Hamilton County Administrator's Office has sent the Village Council a contract for full service as a part of our review process, not for us to sign into law. There was no time that the Village did not have police coverage. If we did not have an officer that could fill a shift, the County was covering any calls that were dispatched in our community. Our Police Department has been struggling to fill vacancies for several years due to multiple factors some of them being higher wages, benefits, promotional opportunities at larger agencies have created a real challenge for us to staff our department. The whole country is having a police officer shortage. Agencies of all sizes are struggling to fill vacancies. We're no exception. The council has been aware of the shortage of police officers and has raised wages over the past three years. We've created two full-time positions in an attempt to attract officers and provide benefits in lieu of hiring part-time officers. The full-time positions helped for a short time. The police chief and other officers moved on to higher paying positions. We have also dismissed officers during their probationary period that were not a good fit for the village. This is not a meeting to cast blame. This has been a very difficult situation for all of us. Please understand that if the Village of Addison enters into a contract with Hamilton County Sheriff's Office, the agreement is for three 24-hour cars for Cleves, North Bend, Addison, and Miami Township. This would be a shared service with other communities. That is only three cars to cover the entire area of the district. This will drastically change response times for an officer or dispatch in our area along with many other factors and concerns. We would like to encourage residents to talk with friends and family that live in surrounding communities on how they feel about their contracted services with Hamilton County Sheriff's Office. What we would really like to do is continue keeping each of you informed on our situation, your feedback as to how we move forward as a community is greatly needed. The focus of this meeting is to engage with our citizens for input on how you want us to move forward. Main questions we would like a response to are, would the citizens want us to work on keeping our own department? Would our citizens want us to contract with Hamilton County Sheriff's Office or another police agency? Would our citizens be willing to support a police levy for whichever services our citizens prefer? The input we receive from our citizens on this matter is very critical for us to move forward as a community. We love our community and will work diligent to do, diligently to do what's best for our community. 
Currently, the mayor and council are looking at all of our options. Each citizen will be allotted three minutes to address the council. This was, will allow us to move forward efficiently for time and fairness for everyone to address the council on their thoughts and concerns for how we should move forward. Councilor, is there anything you'd like to add before I go to the audience? Mm -hmm. I'd only like to say thank you guys for showing up. Absolutely. Really thank you. Yeah, really important. Thank you. All right, we'll move to the um, audience at this time. All right. Linda Martin? Everything want, now. Okay. Ed Kane? Dan, you got this. Yes, I'll let him get to the mic before I give him this. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. It's been a while since I've been in here. Usually it's, uh, we're always fighting on something, but this time I think you guys really got no choice. You know, I don't know what your budget is, the police department you have now. These guys do need the best equipment. We, everybody knows that. So, I mean, it's happened in every department. But I think your cheapest way out is Warren County. And having your cars here, it's gonna free money up because you need money for these streets. We got a lot of repairs in this, in this town. And I don't think you guys got the money to do it. So I think you're gonna weigh everything out, just not the police department, but how your money's gonna be spent and what the cheapest dollar is for us. So it's really without your facts, I don't know how much money you bring in with the police department or what you're paying, how much come out of general fund, or are you just cheaper to go to the county and be done and have a service and not to mess with cars, employees, or nothing. So I, that's all I really have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Phil Toombs. <clears throat> It's been a while since I've been here also. Uh, and I, I just really actually want to reiterate, you know, I think um, and there's not a lot of openness about what the cost of the police department is, um, you know, what their function uh, day in and day out is. Um, if we had a better idea of, you know, versus traffic stops versus actual calls to see, you know, where their incidences aren't um, just about people coming through the community, but how they're actually servicing the community itself would make a big difference for us to understand what their impact is for us. I, honestly, he's right, the roads, um, you know, they should really be a focus for us. Well, is it better if we just add speed bumps and light at the intersection over here to uh, reduce the need for, uh, if it's just mainly traffic violations? Not that your services, you know, aren't greatly appreciated, it's just, is there a better use for our money? And so I just want to reiterate, reiterate his and ask for more openness about where those expenses, what their benefits are, um, and what their actual responses are to this community, not just people passing through the community. That's it. Thank you. I Thank you. Uh, Ma Mayor Mayor? Yes. Uh, we are working, we're not trying to hide anything, mm -hmm. but we don't want bad information to get on the street in our comparisons. You know, we, we need a little time to think about to get the information, work on it from the sheriff's office, and, and also what we have to do. This happened in 24 hours, and uh, we did all that we could to make sure that we had uh, police, sheriff on the street. But that, that you will know. I, I guarantee you that we'll get that information out because we have to work very swiftly. Yeah, this is not just one yeah, meeting well, and that's yeah, it. We, 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 we yes. definitely agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. But everything else is public record, right? Our budget, mm -hmm. yeah, everything's public. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys do have access to what yeah, we are spending. That, that's not a problem. The the spending, but not the responses. No. Yeah, that I think that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. All right, Tracy Toombs. No, I'm okay. You <laughs> All right. Mark it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kathy Boss. Yeah, I saw you say three minutes, three minutes. So I, I know there's not a blame game, but if the chief of police was not monitoring the equipment, whose job is, who's the supervisor of the chief to make sure that equipment was being monitored and it was not out of date? If the chief's not doing his job, who's his supervisor? 
Well, we all know that the mayor supervises. Okay. So I think we should go county. I really do. I've seen more county people come down through here, the police officers and patrol, mm -hmm. in the last week than I have seen in five months from Addison Police Department. Mm -hmm. I think that that would that's the way we should go. We would have a professional police department in here. I, we wouldn't need a secretary. That's going to open up money because then the county will take care of that. They're going to bring their own people in. Why would we need a, a secretary, a police secretary, if we're going county? That would open up another amount of money So for the village. But like I said, I've, I have cameras. I watch the cameras and I never see any Addiston police the whole time that I've come down here multiple times mm -hmm. and they tell me they patrol four or five times a day down by my house and they don't do it. I see the county more than I do Addiston, than I ever did Addiston. So I think Addiston should go county. I mean, that's just my, my opinion. And there's just one comment that I want to make to that too is that, um, however, I, the chief reports to me. I just want everybody to know that like when it comes to vests or supervisor equipment, I'm not a professional in that area. So I don't know how to look that up or anything. So I just want that to be clear as well. And one, one of the first things that are normally asked is, do we have the vests? What is that? And then the That's first the time answer. that okay, it was disclosed you. that the vests were out of date, was that meeting on November the 20th and that's when council immediately took action. Can I, can I have well, something? Then why didn't the, the chief that was before the <coughs> one that just resigned know that those guests were out of date? That's my question. Uh, Somebody had to be monitoring that. Uh, and Apparently nobody was. And, uh, I can agree with you on that aspect of it because if they're coming up, one of the first questions that are always asked is, do we have the vest? Do we have to get vests? That's normally the questions that are always asked by council in terms of the safety equipment for the officers. Then when it came up on that Monday night, we found <coughs> out that they didn't have vests. That was an alarm that council addressed immediately. Now, as far as when they walk up and say, yes, we have vests, there are vests back there, but they're out of date. And it's not a matter of having an out of date vest, it's a matter of having the most current safety equipment that you can possibly have mm -hmm. for the officers. And I think if, uh, truth be known, if the, if the chief, whether it was the one that just resigned, the one before that, or whichever chief it was, if he had disclosed that they didn't have vests, they wouldn't, the officers wouldn't have been on the streets. And it's not a matter of just not having the vests. There are programs out there where you can acquire vests and have the government pay or get reimbursed for them. So really there's, there's no excuse for not having that information. Period. Yeah. Um, just to say something, um, with an interjection with Ms. Bias, um, um, Hamilton County is, you're going to see them a lot because they are trying to acquire our service. So they are going to be up and down our streets making it look good for themselves because they want to entice us to, to join them. So let's not get distracted because we're seeing them more often because I think that might be part of their ploy also to get even, us engaged. Even when we did have the police here, they still were not patrolling like they should have been. Is what I'm saying. And I don't the know. time, the police cars were at this at this building and they were not patrolling the village. So what's the difference? That's what I'm saying. The county or here, if they're sitting in the office for nothing. The three minutes up. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on to Ray Adamson. I don't know uh, what she is planning to do as far as the police itself. I can honestly say whenever that man was on duty, when I walked in the morning, I seen him all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think if you decide to go with the police here, when you hire them, 
you should make them sign a contract for two years or whatever so they just can't get the training and leave. And then also, if they leave before then, make them pay for the best that we bought for them. That's all I got to say. Thank you, Ray. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Terry? Is there a Terry? Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Terry Clark. I live on Main Street. I've never been to one of these Mount Council meetings before, but I wanted to come to this one because I think it's important that we keep our police department. I've got a 14-year-old autistic son that is in escape mode constantly. And I loved having Addison patrol on the streets they actually helped me one time my grandson got out. I don't know what I've done without him. But I think it's crazy to just give up our police department to Hamilton County this fast on such a whim. There, you gotta, there's got to be a lot more decide decisions before we just say, okay, let's do it. A lot more discussion. A lot more discussion. Thank you. Charles Wonk, he didn't want to speak. Robert Clark. This is also my first time ever coming to this. Um, every day after work, I, I come out, I live right there on 1st and Main, and I sit on my front porch, and I see people coming in our town, you know, just people walking in empty-handed and they'll leave our town with stuff in their hands. And then we got this officer right here that shows up. We got somebody that's showing up. He's watching, he's patrolling, he's doing his job. And it, it, it's hard with me and my dad to watch an autistic child and work at the same time. It takes a whole village with an autistic child. And I appreciate the service right there. And you know, whatever we got to do, I feel like we should do it to keep that service because I know, because I actually did what you said already. I talked to friends that are getting service from them. They already told me, buddy, we don't, you call the police right here, you might as well wait, go to sleep and wait till the next day. Somebody's right here. If I need assistance with an autistic child that might hit 50 because he's in escape mode, I got a real good chance with an officer being right here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to add something to that. With the county coming in, you're going to have county guys. Um, I came from the county. I know how the county operates. Uh, the county is hurting also. They're very short with officers. So you're going to have officers being pulled from the east side to cover shifts here on the west side for people that call off or just shortages. So now you've got officers that don't know their surrounding areas. And in his defense, I mean, you got to know this area, especially for that autistic child. I mean, when, when you're trying to find somebody, I mean, it, it, you got to be there quick. Yeah. And uh, to wait for the county or have somebody here that's inexperienced with the the, the area, that, that's very hard. And I, I think it's very unsafe to, to have the county come in and to not have your set officers here that know the area and that can respond really yeah. quick to that area and within that surrounding area. So, just I appreciate you. So, yeah. okay. Chris Thomas? I'm going to pass. You're going to pass? I want to listen. Did anyone else want to speak even though they checked me out? I'd like to speak David Pittman. David Pittman? Okay. My name is David Pittman. I'm pastor of the Addison Baptist Church for the last 24 years. And uh, our church has been here since uh, 1899. And so we've got a lot of history together. But I, I would be remiss if I did not thank the Addison the Village Police Department for the service that our church has received over my 24 years. Uh, I see patrols uh, regularly. Uh, every day. Uh, they've helped us with minor vandalism, uh, crowd control, 
traffic control, some major crimes over the years, and uh, I, I've never worked with a better police department overall than than the Village of Addison's Police Department. I don't know about budgets. I know about church budgets, but I don't know about budgets, and I know about the shortages, but I would be remiss if I didn't publicly thank the uh, Village's Police Department for making uh, our ministry possible uh, at some very difficult times. So uh, I want to thank the department and thank the village. And of course, my, my bias is toward having uh, officers here who respond uh, uh, as, as soon as possible. Uh, our latest break-in was solved in about three minutes. And uh, because a, a police officer was familiar with the village and familiar with what was happening. So, uh, but thank you. And uh, certainly be praying for the council and for the village and for all these discussions as they go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Uh, Wayne Walligman. Uh, Wallington Dentistry, 7th, 7 South Road in Maine. And we've been here, uh, my daughter and I have been here 10 years. And, I, and I'm going to echo what David said too. I, I've had nothing but the greatest relationship with the police here, from Don McWhorter to even those who didn't do that, do, did do some right things. But they always did the right thing with the citizens here that I know, or at least with, with me. Uh, I got responses immediately. I once had a drug addict who was uh, breaking into the car wash next door. And I, I called, and he was there in about 20 seconds. You know, had another problem with the same guy. And again, same thing. Uh, I see him all the time, I really do. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, maybe somebody doesn't, but I'm aware, and I see him. And of course, that's the main street, too. But, uh, uh, and they know the village. Uh, Addison police know the village better. Um, so I would echo that I'd, I'd rather see uh, our local police force uh, than Hamilton County, nothing against them, but it's it's great to have a local presence and, and a better knowledge, uh, like David said, of what's going on around here, and uh, uh, I think that's the better way to go. But I don't know the economics either. I, I'm echoing the same thing. So I I really appreciate what what former mayors and present mayors have done, and all what you guys are doing, and what you look through, what you what you balance, and I, I'll support you any way I can. Uh, but I just wanted to say I, I really appreciate in the past having the Aston Police Force. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. That's it. Council, is there anything? Because that was it. Unless you want to go back to any other discussion. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Sorry. That was the last on the list of addressees. Oh, that was the last. Person. Can I say one more thing? Are we done? Yeah, we got a few minutes. Yeah. You get one this time. <laughs> I don't think anybody is here against the police department at all. I mean, I lived in the village for some eight years. They're around all the time. But I don't think we can afford it. If you guys can put the budget down, these guys need the best equipment and the best cars. We all know that. But I think we're in a position like my company, everybody's company. We got to cut. We don't buy equipment no more. We, we hire somebody else to come and do it because I can't afford to do it. And you guys are in the same boat. This is a company, and some things you're going to do, and some things you ain't. And we, and we know these streets are falling apart. That's my biggest pet peeve here. And we have no money. Because if you do keep the police department, you're also buying Jeeps because the streets are shot. I mean, you can balance it out, but you need to sit down. Danny, what kind of prices are you getting from these guys in the county? I haven't looked. Yeah, I think we need to weigh it out. What's the cost of the secretary, the building, the heat, the cars, your payroll? What's the, all that? Put in this. Do we take out, no, I don't know, do we take out the general fund to fund the police department? Yes. Or do you run on its own? General. General fund. So how much do you usually take out? Do you take half? Are we, are we robbing this to do this and no, it's going down the hill? No, 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 no. Okay, no. that's all I'm in. I don't know. And I think if you, you know, if you lay it out and it works, it works. Mm -hmm. But we need money to, to repair some of these grants you get. You got to match them, correct? On some of the grants, they are a match. So, and yeah, and, and they probably get grants, but you ain't gonna send it. And, and like the lawyer said, you can put one of these guys out there that vest and he got shot. Right. They, they, the police officer's dead. 
his family's going to come in and they're going to own this town. That's why the, you did the smartest thing by pulling them out. It's all lawsuits. Mm -hmm. So you got to get them the best equipment if you're going to do it. I think you really need to sit down with the county's going to pay you. Now, I don't have any problem with the county. I mean, I, where I live, when my house is on fire, Del is the first in because Miami Township. If you have a heart attack out there, you're going to die because it takes too long for them to come. Del High doesn't come down there. You don't have that contract like that. So I know that when I was living out there one night, one of the Addison's police decided to shoot a deer at 12 o'clock at night, and I hear a gunshot. I go out, and there's an office or a car sitting there in the street, nobody around. So I called 911 to say, hey, is there an officer down? So I didn't know what was going on. There was cops all over. But the guy didn't know anybody knew he was going to shoot this deer. And, you know, I don't know if he got shot right underneath his car or what. But they do patrol. I ain't, nobody's saying you guys don't patrol. And it helps your family out. I know that. But, you know, it's it's coming down to money. Not because we want it. But you got to decide, you know, can we afford to keep doing it? And doing it right. And I think that's the key thing. Yeah, thanks. I, right. I really want to straighten out the fact about what the county is going to charge us. We do have an idea. It's, it was zero for this year, but for next year, I don't. I can't remember the exact number, but boy, does it escalate. And before you know, before we know anything, just from our past experiences, I deal with the mayor of Lincoln Heights. She is so sorry that they went to the county. I, yes. I met with the mayor. I meet with these people on a regular basis. Is it because of the service or because they got screwed? Well, they didn't get what they. We're told they would well, get. And you back out. I mean, you got the city, you got that. Oh, I got it's also township. with the Silverton. Yeah. You know, they went in with silver tongue devils and told uh, Mayor you gotta Smith run, you gotta run, how right. good it was going to be. If you're going to do it, you do it. And they didn't, right. they didn't get that. So we got to, I agree with you. We have to get these numbers straight, get the numbers back to the community, and maybe some other information that we may gather in, this, in the meantime. But we also know. That's why we got you here so quickly. It's so important that we hear from every one of you, pro or con, that'll weigh something as well. But uh, I would go down with the ship for Addiston and our police. But I'm I also, <laughs> but I'm also, uh, I'm, I'm also realistic. If it doesn't work out that way, then it doesn't work out that way. But this is what this is uh, for, and it's so important that you guys showed up. I'm, I'm just really happy that you did. And we will definitely schedule more meetings and hopefully that you guys keep attending because I want everyone to be involved in every step we make, regardless when we're bringing up finances, anything else, anything you guys had asked about tonight. I'd like to lay out something and maybe send that out to you guys so that we can meet again and say, okay, here's where we're really at. You know, what do you, you know, where do you think now that we should move? I mean, right now it looks good, but look like leaves. What they did, they're not liking their coverage. Exactly. I mean, we're talking one car to do Miami Township, Cleves, North Bend, and Addiston. All four entities, one car. What happens if he's got a call? What happens after that? Where, are we stuck? What if I just went away? And you do have to remember, once Addison Police Department is gone, it is almost impossible to get it back. So we need to thoroughly go through these decisions and weigh out all the pros and cons before we make this choice. Hmm. Okay. Quick Just question. Yes. Yeah, we got a little extra time. Mayor, is that okay? Yeah. Have all the townships thought about coming together, maintaining this one and expanding it out rather than be independent on the county? That's some of our options. Yeah, right. yeah. We have several options, and that, that's really and good that you recognize. The reason I've ever leaned towards the county is that typically their training is very thorough. They're also handling all the benefits. The escalation of benefits is really where you're, you're getting a sum cost. Uh, and it's every business. You know, anybody who's a business owner <laughs> knows this. Um, you know, so I don't know. If there's a collaboration between the townships, it makes more sense. Um, rather than just being this little tiny island that's just kind of floating here, and, um, our relationship with the other communities is, you know, we have a negative impression, you know, with, I, I'm sure you guys have heard this, you know, that it's almost kind of embarrassing, like, don't, don't drive through Addison. Don't come exactly. to Addison. Yeah, um, right. you know, and some people might think of that as positive, 
I do. But you know, <laughs> but other people are like, <laughs> you can't you can't funnel business, you can't funnel people and traffic uh, to your businesses here because there is that like, don't go 26, you know, yeah, and things that could be resolved simply with speed bumps. Again, not that they <laughs> resolving other things, but yeah. just that impression, you know. Anyways. That's all. No, I'll get rumors been around. I'm very defensive about that. I've been here it's for been around from the time that North Bend was yeah. a speed trap. I was and they, actually pulled over for going. Like, I think it was maybe one or two miles an hour. So yeah, I was, yes. Oh, I'd like to look that one up. Yeah. We all have people <laughs> that you <laughs> But that's I've never that's that. your, your I, I can guarantee you <laughs> that if you were pulled, if you were stopped for going 26, I guarantee you that ticket got dismissed. I paid the ticket. <laughs> you may have paid it, but I'll tell you one thing. I wouldn't have prosecuted it. Yeah. Well, that's fine, okay? but like, I still, I, you know. I, 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 yeah. hear exactly, I hear exactly what you're saying, but routinely, people don't get stopped for going 29, 32, 34, anything like that. Those tickets kind of go by the wayside. Now, when they're coming down Main Street at 43 miles an hour, or First Street at 43 <clears throat> miles an hour, and you got cars on each side of the street, that's totally different. I mean, you're 18 miles over the limit. You've got kids all over the streets down there. That that's a whole different situation, which can be resolved with construction. Right. You repaid roof roads. But if you're out on 50 and you're going down 50, and this is real easy. Where somebody glides through at 65, 68, 69, that's a problem because when you're coming up 50, like on a night like tonight, even if you're coming up at six o'clock, a lot of these people will walk down 50 to get to the McDonald's, and you can't you can't see them walking, and there's there's something that you have to do in order to slow that traffic down for the safety of people other than the person who's in the car. There are pedestrians, everything else. But that whole deal about don't go over 25 or you're going to get a ticket, it doesn't. Uh, everybody likes to say it, but it doesn't. It really doesn't happen. Like I said, it's just a lot of that part, if we you know, resolve things with either infrastructure, with lights and speed bumps, so are, are they able to get their income back through, you know, the services that they're providing for us? And that's, I, I'll stop beating it down. Well, the, the income from Mayor's Court is really negligible, okay? So it's not like Mayor's Court isn't used as a revenue generator, because to be honest with you, it doesn't generate enough money to be a revenue generator. It's more... They're out there to protect things where you see something occur where somebody is blowing down First Street or Main Street at 43 miles an hour. They will stop them. Or if they're on 50 going, you know, 64 and up, they will stop them. You know, they'll put a, they'll put a stop to that. I have a quick question. Yes. So if we, you know, if the police station is kept, what prevents this from happening again in the future? Like, are we just going to keep going through the same thing if there's no, because no one knows like where it came from, where like the information of this coming out of nowhere. Who's mm -hmm. to say there's no one, like this isn't going to happen again. Like that doesn't make sense to. And go ahead. Here, here's what the issue is. Council's been having issues over, say, for instance, the past three years, staffing the department because there's been a fall off in individuals that go to APADA to get trained as police officers. That's been one of the biggest problems. So Addiston would obtain part time police officers, attempt to fill in various shifts, and we did pretty well with that for a number of years in terms of having a full-time police chief and then part-time officers, and you would routinely have maybe 15, 16 of them. So you can plug all the holes in the schedule. Then as the, um, as the OPADA graduates drop down, all these communities are trying to get whoever they can. So what used to be, OPADA would turn out a full class of officers, 
routinely. Now they're not. They're turning out less and less. So all the communities are going after these officers. All the communities are offering more money, larger benefits, et cetera. So what ends up happening is we have not enough officers, holes to plug as far as protection for the village, and then the sheriff's department would come in. If the sheriff's department comes in on that basis to plug a hole, the cost really ratchets up out of sight. And I understand that, but that's not answering the question as to what is going to prevent this from happening. There's no the way to know. That type of thing is there going to be someone who is keeping track of that, you know, moving forward to make sure that everything is up to date when it needs to be up to date. I'm not, you know, it's nothing about money. It's, I mean, it is, but like my question specifically is what will be done to prevent this from happening in the future? At, at every council meeting, the police chief appears, the street commissioner appears to give council an update on what's going on in the community. When a police chief comes up and he starts talking about appointing this officer, appointing that officer, Normally, the question focuses on, you know, do we have the equipment? Do we have the vests, et cetera? Yes, 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 yes. Okay? So that's one, that's one issue. The cost of the vest is really insignificant overall. That's not going to break your budget because normally we can get reimbursed for those either through the Attorney General or the U.S. Department of Justice. So that's, that's not really the issue as far as that is concerned. We hired police chiefs, we compensated them. They're supposed to have oversight over the police department. They're supposed to know their job, et cetera. I think you'll see a different approach as far as council's um, inquiry concerning these issues because everything's like on a trust and verify basis at the present time, especially after you find out that the chief sending out police officers with expired vests. So he was and I aware? Think, please. So he was aware that they were expired? Yeah, you, you probably should be if, um, if you go back and make the inquiry and you ask an officer, is your vest current? No, my vest is from 2014, 2012. And it's like, and you're going to let somebody out on the streets? With that, I would think that your first thing would be, you're not going anywhere until we get a vest. Mm -hmm. Because not only for the officer's safety, but just for counsel. They don't, right. they don't want that on, on their conscience either, period. Uh, that's a good question. It's a great question. I want to be perfectly honest with you. This is a wake-up call for all of us. A whole lot of things are going to change from this point on. And, and I think the, the certain committees and, and the people who are um, responsible for those things will be handled differently, you know, if we're successful in keeping our community. And while I'm talking, I just want to make sure you know, and without going into a lot of detail, this is a hostile takeover from the county. They've done things that are, that are not regularly done to get a village uh, police uh, structure torn down. So we, we, I won't say anything more about that, but keep that in the back of your mind. And I think that, you know, it's important to think too, like I agree with it. I'm not like sided one or the other, sure. right? But if we are going to stick with Addison, then things do need to be done properly, exactly. such as making sure all of this stuff doesn't happen. Exactly and I think I that's said. my biggest thing, like, in a decision for this would be, like, guaranteeing us that, you know, that stuff's going to be checked and that we're not going to have to be in this position again moving forward. Like, that's... It's a great question, a great concern. Is there a plan? After the 45 days, That's what we're working on. do we default? 
Well, that's why we're here. We're kind of here to see what your guys' input is, and you know, do yeah. you want the the police community to stay here? Or do you want to go with the county so that we can kind of move forward on, you know, how we are going to move forward on making this police board? So we're making that decision after the forty-five minutes. Oh, yeah. uh, no, I mean we're going to start making that decision after this council meeting. Yeah, they're and pushing the us to sign to CD. I mean, they're pushing us to sign it. Yeah. And they're, I mean, they're working really hard to get that done. But, but you guys have been working on this since since we met. Yeah, from day one. 20th. Yeah. yeah. Kathy. First off, when the officers are hired, is there an inventory sheet that's given with every piece of equipment they get and they sign for that inventory? And are the dates checked at that time that they are hired? Like, whose responsibility, if the chief is not checking it, I want to know whose other responsibility is, not just if the chief's not doing his job, then somebody else needs to overlook that. Second, how is Hamilton County being hostile when we, we had to stop our police from going out because it was our responsibility, the village's responsibility to make sure they were going out with equipment that was up to date. Okay. And that's why I said I went to the same thing more about it, because there's a lot of details that are, come, that are going to be coming forth to the community. We, we just can't throw the whole bag just, open unless stuff starts flying in every direction. We have to work hard. Compliance. So first part, first part of that, I'm sorry, Dan. Mm, first part of that is, yes, we did not have knowledge. That, well, why not? That okay, was hold question. Up. Okay, mm -hmm. so that was our fault as a council. We, we lacked that information because we was trusting in who we hired. But who's their boss? That's what I mean. But hold on, hold on. Yeah. We, we, we trusted in who we hired because he had the credentials on what we needed. So we thought he was doing his job. So now that this has happened, our eyes are open. We know what we need to do as a council and as a mayor on what we need to be looking for in a ball, in, in, a, in a chief, and what we need to be looking for in making the list on, like you just said, the inventory. We need to be checking these things as well. If just in case he is not doing his job. So those are things that we did fail at. So we are sorry as a council that we failed our residents, but we are here to fix these things. But if we don't know that they're happening yet, we cannot fix them, but we are here to do it. But like if you have an inventory sheet and you're when somebody's hired and you check that expiration date, right then and there you will know that's expired. You know I what think I mean? Can, uh, I'm that's sorry, what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. That's good. And and that's what we are. You would know for. that that I'll, test cannot be worn out in public. And okay. we know that hold, now. Hold up, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, just a minute. We've covered that and we're gonna work on all these things, but we're not gonna do it right this minute. What you've given us is yeah, good. It's and it's a part of what we're going to try to do. We're, we're trying to rectify it. Your input is just not bouncing off the wall. Because you know the problems I have down where I live. <laughs> I don't want to see any police down there. Who's the problem? I know that. I, know wow. that. I, I don't know about that particular part, but no, I know. I have cameras that come from Aston, go to the north end, please. Make sure you my house and never see a police officer patrol. Yeah. I just want to know why he resigned. Mm -hmm. I'd like to ask Mr. Kelly a question. Uh, Allison is inside okay. Miami Township, right? North we're, End, yes. please. We're all inside Miami Township. Yes. But yes. we're incorporated. Miami Township is an outside incorporated. Okay, so they have any? They collect any money from us? The tax money at all? Miami uh, Township no, on taxes? No, so. Fire. Yeah. No, they so. they Just fire. We have a fire levy. Yeah. That we designate for Miami Township for their fire protection and EMS, and EMS for the village of Addison. Do we do anything to their roads? Are we paying any of that off our tax bill no. goes to their roads or anything? No. no. Okay. So in, in Hamilton County, the sheriff's in charge of the whole county, every police right. department. That's what I was taught when I was on the fire service. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So does the sheriff have the right to come to this, into this village? The sheriff sure, can just because we don't. I know he can come in yeah. if it ain't run right. But can he bring a car in since we don't have a police department? They can is he be responsible for it, Mr. Kelly? The is sheriff? he responsible for it? As the county, as me as a taxpayer in Hamilton County, he is the sheriff. Like the coroner can arrest the sheriff. The sheriff's in charge of all 
Not many people know that. Mm -hmm. But you know that? Yeah. the sheriff, the sheriff, the highest authority in Hamilton County, correct. The sheriff is in charge of the entire county. Right. So they can go wherever they want to go. They can go anywhere they want. Correct. Mm -hmm. That was like saying when I was in the Delhi. They, in my, when I was a kid, they had the police department Delhi and the county, and there was a big fight with their private police department. But we can talk about all this. But the thing comes down to money, and I'm just saying, are we entitled to any county money? If we do go county, because we are in Hamilton County, is my, no. my question. No. But the sheriff still is in charge of this community. Does he, by law, have to supply a county car to me if I called him? Because in Delhi, it always was if you're in Hamilton County, you can ask for a county car. Because the sheriff's in charge of the county. They're not going to dispatch. I'm not going to do it. I know that. They're not going to dispatch yeah. on but that basis. I don't know if they, they will now, yeah. or they would when we didn't have coverage. Right. They would uh, dispatch. And then, and then we like we did the firehouse, Green Township, Delhi, we all move in. Delhi, Green Township, county, city would be here if an officer needs assistance. Then if you knew, if, if, you knew if you were with the fire department, you know that they have mutual aid. Yes. And mutual aid is designed where Correct. you have your own department, and it's say like you have Hurricane Katrina come in, and you're overwhelmed, then everybody goes to that scene of the emergency regardless of the department. Right. Or if you have an officer shooting. If we had an officer shooting down here, you may see cars coming from oh, I know you do. I see all that. over. I, I know how it works. All over. Yes. That's what mutual aid's for. But mutual aid is not to be used for I, I we're gonna right save now, we're happens. gonna save our money and just not have a police department and well, yeah, send us cars it. from wherever to cover us. But they won't you do need it. Something, something needs to be done. But I know if, if something happened, you're going to get a response. I mean, I've been to Kroger's and I, mean, I see nothing but uh, five or six police cars, county cars, all over the place at all times. But I've never seen this one car crash. I mean, there's a lot of cars out there. Something. But if you can afford to keep the King Thousand police, then we keep them. It's, it's down to money. It's not about inventory or this guy did that or that guy did it's about can you actually afford to keep your police department and pay the guys good money because it's in every business three you know when, right. when we got on the fire department it was maybe a hundred guys and that's three minutes tests. for you and that was our taxes that was our two thank you you know, I mean, now you might have ten guys to apply for the job i know you checked out but lori would you like your three minutes i just want to know why he resigned that's the question i'm not here to answer to um, is why he resigned um Family issues. Family. Yeah, he actually family has issues. family issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he felt he had to attend. On top of him, the prior chief was serving as a TAC officer for the community. When the chief resigned that Monday evening, the next day, the prior chief resigned as a TAC officer. Because if I had to answer to guess, Everything started to get exposed. Again. Yeah. This is the first time. Again, this is the first time with the Addison Police Department. I mean, look at the look at the news. We're all over the news. That's the I think that's our biggest thing is that I mean, there's not underlying that. controls and we keep having yeah. things happen. So I wanna and I apologize. I wanna reassure all of you guys. I'm the, the new appointed chief here. I, I plan to make a lot of changes. Um, I, I know the bad things that were happening here. I know the lazy officers that weren't out patrolling. But I know some of you guys that have seen me out there, and I'm out there 24-7. I come in here to use the restroom, and that's about it. Now, our new officers that we're going to have coming on, they're not going to be sitting in here. I can tell you that. I will be checking these cameras, and I will be putting out discipline for, you know, stuff like that. If they're going to be out there sitting, I want them sitting on 50. I want them sitting somewhere where there's a trouble area if they want to sit around. So they're not going to be inside this department at all. Um, but I, I've already been working on structures, logs, everything like that. Inventory. To make, inventory, inventory to make this department the top notch that we can be. So my goal is yeah, to be better than Indian Hill. That's my goal. Yeah. I know we're at the bottom. I know everybody talks about us. I came from the county. Everybody talks. So my goal is to, to be better than everybody else and to thrive. And I want people to want to come to Addison and work like, man, that's a great department and it's a great place. That is my goal that I'm trying to push for you guys and the citizens 
I am very passionate about my job. I actually lo left law enforcement and came back because I, I wanted to just be involved. I started my own business, became very successful. I, I don't need this, but I'm doing it for the people, the community, and because I love the passion of policing. And being a part-time officer when I was here, it was very relaxed. I got to pick and choose my day, stuff. That's not gonna happen anymore. Anybody that comes on, they're gonna have a set schedule and I'm gonna make sure every shift is filled. So, that's so have you guys already decided to hire cops before we even find out if we're going to county? Not yet, that's why we're having this meeting so we can it's, jump on it. I've lived here all my life. Right. I have seven cameras around my house to keep the drug dealers out of my house. I, I know what you're talking about, yep. You, you know what I'm talking about, but do. nobody does anything about it. That's just it. Well, I can tell you, ma'am. man exposed himself to my seven-year-old granddaughter. I got you, but I can tell you that when I work, I, I mostly work third shift. Yeah. I tried to get out of this. Then clock running out of order. Order. Do you know who would have gotten in trouble? It would have been me. If I would have went over there and handled myself, I would have gotten in trouble. Council and everyone has spoken their um, it's been on a list as far as a yes. yes. We do need to have another meeting. We're not going to solve everything in one meeting, so I definitely would like for all of you to come back in a meeting. I was the one that got my bike side. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. Council, if you don't have any further mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. That's all we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you guys want to set another public meeting now, or do you want to no, do we, look we until Monday to see, see where we are? Yeah. So basically, we're going to get their budget, our budget. All right. Would you guys prefer to keep going or any other business? Or if nobody else really has anything different, I have to say. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Somebody, you said you worked for the county. Yes, yes. So you already got all the training and stuff? I already got all the training. I can tell you their training is no different than our training. They train once a year just like we do. It's all, it's all the same. Motion to adjourn. Al Blitz, second motion to adjourn. 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 Second motion to